Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yolanda Carapia, and I am an attorney here at the Castro Verde Law Group. And I just wanted to go ahead and take the moment to welcome all of you to the Philips CPAP Mass Tort Webinar. I will be your mod moderator today, and I am honored to introduce to you our guest speaker today, attorney Natalie Hagen, who is a Mass Tort attorney here at the Castro Verde Law Group. Natalie has a deep understanding of the issues surrounding the Philips CPAP machines and has been actively involved in assisting individuals seeking legal action against the manufacturer. Today, she will provide us with the valuable insights into the potential dangers associated with these devices and the legal options available to those who have suffered harm. She will share her knowledge on the current state of the Philips CPAP mass tort litigation and answer any questions you may have at the end of the webinar. We are very fortunate to have attorney Natalie with us today and believe that she will be able to provide each of you with valuable information to help you or your loved ones make informed decisions about your health and well-being. Natalie will take over from here. All right, thank you, Yolanda. Um, we can move on to the next slide. So again, my name is Natalie Hagan. I'm one of the attorneys here at, at uh, the Castro Verde Law Group. Um, and I am specifically working in the Mass Tort Division here at the Castro Verde Law Group. So today's webinar, um, as you can tell, is gonna be focused on the Philips CPAP and respironic device recall. Um, we're going to give you some information on what exactly this recall is about, as well as um, to see if you are potentially eligible for some compensation. Uh, so to begin with, the FDA recall on the Philips respironic device, um, there has been a massive recall of million sleep apnea machines um, that has stoked anger and frustration among many patients. Um, U.S. officials are also weighing in on this unprecedented legal action, um, you know, that has been going on against Phillips. So, uh, first of all, the FDA has announced a recall on certain types of ventilators, CPAP, and BiPAP machines manufactured by Phillips Respironics. Uh, testing shows that the sound abatement foam, so the foam that is used to silence uh, these uh, Philips respironic machines um, is, you know, degrades over time uh, and with regular use. And as a result, users uh, may inhale, inhale or swallow debris from this foam, uh, which is made, this foam is made with very harmful chemicals um, and that it leads to adverse health effects. So uh, when these users are constantly using these devices and putting them in at night and with constant and frequent use, uh, black particles from the foam are breaking down and ending up in these airways and into the lungs and throats and nasal cavities of the users of the Philips respironic devices. Okay, you can move on to the next slide. So who uses the Philips Respironic devices? Uh, respiratory devices like the ones that are manufactured by Philips have a variety of uses. Uh, the continuous positive airway pressure devices, so the CPAP machines are frequently used in the treatment of sleep apnea patients, a condition that causes normal breathing to, slot, to stop during sleep. Uh, the bi-level positive airway pressure, so the BiPAP devices are also used in treatment of sleep apnea, as well as conditions such as COPD, pneumonia, and several others. Um, so as you can see here, the common use or the common users of the Philips respironic devices are sleep apnea patients, COPD patients, asthma patients, as well as those with other conditions. They're also commonly used during surgical procedures and are often used to assist critically ill or coma patients. So why are these devices being recalled? Uh, the FDA has received more than 70,000 reports of problems attributed to these devices, including pneumonia, 
infections, headaches, and in the most severe cases, cancer. So the sound dampening foam um, that is pressurized in these breathing machines, as I had mentioned earlier, breaks down. Um, and it's these tiny particles that are causing uh, these individuals to end up with these sicknesses. So the reason why they're recalling these machines is to eliminate the foam um, in many cases, um, especially in the earlier cases where they were doing replacements, they were removing the phone and putting in silicone pieces instead. Um, because like I said, these foam devices, they were breaking down um, while the user was using these CPAP machines. So there are several risks to the foam degradation degradation. Um, the risks include headaches, asthma, allergic reactions, also cancer-causing effects on the internal organs. Uh, the FDA ordered Philips to provide clear information about the health risks associated with their products. Um, and as I mentioned on the previous slide, the FDA has received over 70,000 reports of related illnesses. Um, and as you can see on this little diagram, uh, these are some of the side effects of the exposure to that specific sound abatement foam. Uh, so asthma, vomiting, dizziness, nausea, hypersensitivity, inflammatory response. And like I said, this foam is a toxic carcinogen. So in the most severe cases, it can cause cancer. So there is a patient dilemma. Uh, Philips is, you know, has a majority of the market, right? So when it comes to these sleep apnea machines, um, you know, the Philips has control of about 90% of the market. So this has left many patients with a dilemma. Uh, right now, patients are faced with choosing between using this potentially harmful device or you know, uh, obtaining other risky remedies. Some of those risky remedies include removing foam out themselves, uh, buying secondhand machines, or just going without the machine entirely. Um, you know, some, uh, some doctors have even said that most patients are better off using the recalled machine um, because you know, finding new machines has been difficult. Um, and for those of you who have sleep apnea, untreated sleep apnea can cause people uh, to stop breathing 100 of, about 100 times per night, leading to dangerous drowsiness um, and increased risk of a heart attack. So the problem is more common in men than in women, and with estimates of ranging from 10% to 30% of adults affected. Uh, most patients are better off using the recall device because the risks of untreated sleep apnea outweigh the potential harm of dis the disintegrating foam. Um, but you know, it, it, it's really left patients without really any options, right? And doctors have been hard pressed to help patients buy new machines, which generally can cost anywhere from $500 to $1,000. Um, and that are already in short supply due to the supply chain problem. Um, so these patients, not many options, and they're often getting told by their doctors, look, you know, when weighing the risk, uh, you know, you're better off using the machine than stopping it. And there are patients that ultimately decide, hey, I don't want to use it at all. And now they're put at even greater risk, uh, you know, for not using the machine. So, you know, Phillips, has unfortunately put many of these patients in a very, very tough spot. So legal action and FDA response. Uh, there have been over 340 uh, personal injury lawsuits against Phillips that have been consolidated in the Pennsylvania Federal Court. Uh, so for those of you that are not familiar uh, with mass torts, essentially what happens is uh, a tort is a personal injury, right? And these injuries span all across the United States. And because there are just so many people claiming injuries in a variety of states, 
um, they consolidate all these lawsuits into one federal district court, uh, just to kind of for administrative purposes and to make the cases go smoother. So that way there's not one case happening in Nevada that is, you know, um, getting dismissed and there's not another case in Florida where the claimant is winning a million dollars, right? So in order to, you know, make the process more efficient and for administrative purposes, these lawsuits are all consolidated within one federal district court. So the, uh, the, these lawsuits have been consolidated in the Pennsylvania federal court. Uh, the FDA is considering a second order to force Phillips to improve and accelerate their repair and replace program. Uh, the FDA, just like many of the patients, um, has stated their frustrations and states that Phillips has not provided all the information that they've requested on the risks to the users of these Philips CPAP machines. So why should Philips uh, be held accountable and liable for the injuries of its users? So Philips disclosed earlier this year that it had received a Department of Justice subpoena over the recall. Uh, the agency hasn't publicly comment on the matter uh, per federal rules, but an FDA inspection of the Phillips uh, Pennsylvania offices have uncovered a, a long list of red flags since last fall, um, including emails suggesting that the company was warned of the problem six years before the recall. So in October of 2015, one customer appeared to warn Phillips that polyester uh, pilothrin foam, right, the foam that's used inside of these devices, could degrade according to the FDA. And between 2016 and early 2021, the FDA problem, uh, the FDA found 14 uh, instances where Phillips was made aware of the issue and was analyzing the problem internally. Um, no further design change, corrective action, field correction was ever conducted, uh, which is what the FDA states. So even in an, uh, a May 2018 email, the foam supplier had wrote to Phillips in an email stating that we would not recommend the use of this polyester foam in such an environment. It will eventually decompose into a sticky powder. Um, this is according to an affidavit that again was in the subpoenaed records uh, from the Department of Justice. Um, so it's very unfortunate that Phillips you know, decided not to protect its users um, and was well aware for the last you know, five, six years that the foam that was being used in these devices was harmful um, to its users and that it was decomposing, resulting in these small black particles ending up in the airways of its users, uh, which is why we believe that, you know, Philips should be held accountable and li liable for the injuries to its users. So, on the screen right now, there are a list of the devices that are included in the recall. Um, so there are different devices, as I had mentioned earlier, they're not just prescribed to sleep apnea patients, but they're also used for a variety of other purposes, including for those um, that are in a coma or other surgical support. So these are the list of devices. So I recommend, you know, if you, have been a user of these Philips Respironic machines that you take a screenshot um, and save them. Uh, so that way you know if the device that you're using at home falls into this recall. Okay. And all the devices that are recalled were manufactured prior to April 26, 2021. So if your device was manufactured after that date, that means that uh, Philips at that point was no longer using that foam component and instead it was replaced with silicone. Um, and the recall applies to all serial numbers for the listed device models. 
Um, and here on this slide as well, you can see pictures of the different devices uh, that have been recalled. So the possible injuries uh, from the Philips Respironic devices, um, there are a variety of injuries. Um, some of them include acute inhalation injury, chronic asthma, chronic bronchitis, um, so chronic long-term, uh, reoccurring pneumonia. In a lot of uh, the claimants, they're finding that um, if they've had continuous pneumonia, so for example, you've been diagnosed with pneumonia two, three times every year, uh, that it might have been related back to uh, the Philips Respironic device use. Uh, pulmonary fibrosis, scarring of the lungs, and as you can see as well, just a variety of cancers that can uh, result from the use of these Philips Respironic devices. So what should you do if your CPAP or Philips Respironic device has been recalled? So the first thing you should do is contact your doctor. Uh, most doctors should be aware that there has been a recall on these devices. Um, so you should definitely make your doctor aware that you have been using this device and how long you've been using it for. Uh, you should also be registering your device on the Philips Respironic recall website. Uh, the link is in red. Um, on this website, uh, Philips is essentially keeping count of the amount of claimants um, you know, that have been using their devices. Also, uh, this allows you to receive a replacement device, right? So one, a device that doesn't have that foam in it. Um, Philips is giving these claimants um, a device that has the silicone piece instead of the foam piece um, and preserve any evidence. Uh, so, for example, sometimes when you fill out this, uh, this device registry on the recall website, they'll ask you to send your device back. You do not want to do that. Um, keep the device. Um, keep any black particles that are in the air pathways of the CPAP device or the respironic device that you're using. Uh, any medical records, uh, prescription records. Um, and take photos as well. So if you look at the airway of your CPAP device and you notice the black debris that kind of um, is inside of the airway, uh, take pictures of that um, as well as any other debris that you've noticed um, coming from the device. Uh, the preservation of evidence is extremely important, especially if you intend on pursuing a claim um, you know, it's the only way that we as lawyers can show that you've actually been harmed by this device. Um, so just make sure you're preserving any and all evidence. And if you do register your device and they ask you to send your current one back, you have the option to decline um, to keep your original device and just have them send you a new one. So oftentimes with a lot of these lawsuits, we get asked, how much money can I get if I sue? Um, so it's the answer is going to be, it depends. Um, but uh, those who have been victims of these uh, Phillips machines uh, may be eligible for up to six figure payouts. Now, everything is gonna depend depending on your individualized injury. So, for example, your medical expenses, if you've been diagnosed with reoccurring pneumonia for the last six years, right, and you've had constant uh, hospital visits three times, four times a year, obviously your medical expenses are going to be a lot higher than somebody who's maybe been to the hospital just once in the last five years. Lost wages, uh, the same things go for lost wages. If you've been in the hospital consistently, you've had cancer, you have not been able to go back to work, um, you're obviously your settlement is going to be a lot higher than somebody who maybe hasn't, their case hasn't been so severe. Uh, loss of future earnings, pain and suffering, and any other economic losses. So these specific components go into the possible compensation that you can receive um, if you decide to pursue a lawsuit against Philips for these respironic devices. 
Um, and even in some cases, uh, the court may award plaintiffs punitive damages. So punitive damages are essentially damages that are um, awarded as a punishment, right? A punishment to the defendant. And in these types of cases, they would be a punishment for them knowing uh, for you know, however many years that their devices were harmful to its users in not providing adequate warning uh, to its users regarding these defects. Um, so that, that's a possibility as well. So injured, um, contact us. So we are accepting the Philips CPAP machine. Um, you can either contact our firm directly uh, and give us a call at our phone number, uh, which will be on the next slide. You can send us an email, or if you go to our website, um, you can fill out a form that will ask you some questions um, regarding your CPAP use. Uh, we offer free consultations and case evaluations when uh, we operate on a contingency fee. So we do not uh, receive any payment until you do. And that's really important to keep in mind. Um, obviously, if your case unfortunately doesn't go through, you know, we're not going to charge you anything uh, for our services. So we only win if you win. Okay. And if you would like to screenshot this information, um, this just includes our link to our mass tort section of our website where you can fill out that form. Um, it also includes my email as well as uh, our office number. So if you are interested in a free case evaluation, uh, you can contact me or the office in any of these three ways and we will get back to you as soon as possible and evaluate your case to see if you may be eligible for compensation. And with that being said, I will leave the platform open to any questions. So if you want to write your question in the chat or unmute yourself, uh, please do, because I would be more than happy to ask, answer any questions um, that any of you may have. All right, well, if there aren't any questions, um, then I will just end this webinar, but thank you to everybody who showed up. And again, if you are interested in learning more, do not hesitate to contact us. All right, bye-bye everyone.